Hi everyone. I think it's been about three months to the day that I posted a review, so I've been gone for a while, but um, hopefully it won't be another three months until I post another one. Uh, but I have a perfume review for you, or a, a fragrance review for you tonight. Um, the last time I posted a review, it also happened to be thundering and, and lightning really, really loud outside, and it threatens to be uh, doing the same thing in not too long. So if you hear loud, booming sounds, um, that's what that's going to be. Um, I've noticed that um, since I've started collecting fragrances, of, I guess over the past six months or so, um, what I've noticed is that I'm coming across a lot of things and buying some things. I don't have a huge collection. I have about 20 bottles. Um, but buying some things that I never see reviewed. And in my collection, I probably have about five things that I've never seen reviewed in the YouTube fragrance community, as we call it. So this is going to be one in that series of, of fragrances, which I really, really like, or at least happen to own, and this one I, I do really, really enjoy, that I've never seen a review of. I've seen a review of another fragrance in the same house, but not of this one. Um, of course, you can already tell what it is by the name of the review. It's, um, it's from the house of Critzia. And it's, uh, well, that doesn't help with the camera. Um, it's Critzia Uomo. Okay. And, uh, packaging is pretty simple. Um, a bottle. So it like this. And the bottle looks like this. I've had this one for four or five months and, um, used it quite frequently throughout the winter, but I haven't made too much of a dent in it, as you can see. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about it. Um, like many of the fragrances that have been around since the 80s, and by the way, this one did come out in 1984, Kritia Uomo has been reformulated at least once, I think, and maybe more than that. Uh, this review only talks about the most recent formulation and as someone who has worn it for probably off and on for 15 years or so ever since I was in middle school or high school I've never really noticed a significant change in the formulation so I think the, le the last formulation has been uh, maybe the longest standing one I guess um, okay so so many scents uh, created in the 70s and 80s have sort of fallen by the wayside due to our ever-changing tastes and fragrances. You know, you get the big powerhouses of the 70s and 80s, and then you get these sort of uh, more masculine um, thing of the 90s, and then you get these watery things that have been dominating for the last 10 or 15 years. So it's it's not it's not too too weird to think that our, our tastes are changing and that but some stick around right um it's rare but occasionally you'll see uh people talk about a, a perfume or scent that's been around for 40 or 50 years it's rare though and having watched youtube fragrance reviews for about six months now and only posting mine for maybe three or four even though i've only posted a few I've never seen a review of this, like I said, and considering the quality of the scent, it's really a shame. It's not for everyone, but it wears so incredibly well, especially in the winter, that I just had to share how much I enjoy it with a bigger audience. And since winter has just ended and people are starting to do their, their spring lineups and spring favorites, I figured before it gets too hot, I should mention this one. I think it's really too good to be kept a secret. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about what Fragrantica has to say about this. I'll hold up the bottle while I do it. Okay, according to Fragrantica, on the top, uh, Critia Uomo has aldehydes, uh, artemisia, juniper berries, mandarin orange, basil, and lemon. 
In the middle, it has cyclamen, carnation, sandalwood, jasmine, cedar, pine tree needles. Something to keep in mind, pine tree needles. And geranium. And in the base, it has leather, patchouli, musk, oak moss, and vetiver. Uh, like I said, it was released in 1984, and it was created by, uh, I couldn't find the name of a, a perfumeur uh, specifically, but it was created by the Swiss company uh, Fermaniche, which is a, um, a fragrance company. Um, I want to say the very beginning, I'm not going to spray it on. <laughs> I just got out of the shower and um, I actually used a really fragrant soap. So I don't want to spray it on my skin and mix it with the smell of the soap. But I will describe to you how it smells and um, I, I, maybe another reason why I don't want to spray it because it's, it's really quite strong. Um, it's more complex than this, but I can only describe the opening. The opening alone is pine 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 specifically pine needles okay some reviews online of course not uh, on youtube accuse it of being pine sol like in its smell but when i think of pine sol i think medicinal or i think detergent like and overly synthetic i don't get that at all with critia um but the opening reminds me of specifically is the memory of going out in a huge field at Christmas and choosing a Christmas tree from a huge sp spruce forest or a pine forest and sort of sawing the tree down and dragging the tree back to your car, to your truck, and having that smell of pine resin and pine needles all over your hands. It's that resinous, sticky, sparkly, sappy smell of just like the essence of spruce or the essence of pine tree smell. That's what this opening is like for me. And it kind of has, you know, with all the resin and the pine sappiness, it is a little harsh. Um, Again, not medicinal or, or offensive or, or synthetic, but strong. It's kind of grating on the nose when it opens. If you don't overapply it, and I would never spray more than three or four sprays of this stuff, ever. That grating quality only lasts maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And that's only if you have it, you know, right in your face. Um, it, it never loses that sea, you know, that sea green, deep earthiness of pine. But as time goes up, as time goes on, you start to pick up some of the more floral notes. And it never turns into a floral fragrance, per se. But you can definitely pick up on the geranium and the carnation after about 10 or 15 minutes of it sitting on your skin. I want to emphasize again how strong it is. It's got staying power, and it projects, and it it lasts. It's it's so strong, actually. Um, you, I don't know if you can see this. It's got an atomizer. Okay, the way I usually, you know, usually you would apply, like, say, at this distance, right, just to get the maximum amount of fragrance you can on your skin. I usually apply from maybe a foot away, and then I'll kind of bring in my my arm to catch it. Because if I put a whole spray on my arm, I think that's too much. And then I'll do the same thing, kind of catch it with the other arm, maybe one spray on my neck or something, and that's it. Um, so you sort of more, well, at least I want, a, sort of like a faint mist instead of a full spray. Um, when I've sprayed this on my clothes, you spray it on a jacket, you know, a winter jacket or uh, a shirt that you wear in the winter, it's not uncommon at all. Smell it 48 hours later. Not uncommon at all. Even when it's really, really, really cold outside, freezing, you still smell it two days later. The projection in the sillage 
uh, are just off the charts good. Um, like, like I said, three or four sprays, it lasts uh, often in excess of 12 hours. So, considering how I've described it as a sort of piney, certainly pine based, resinous, oak mossy, and you get sort of a maybe a, a less offend I mean as it as it wears down on your skin, you get the oak moss and you get a vetiver or sort of those grassy notes. But that pine does stay with you. Uh, it sort of wears down <clears throat> and becomes nice and more subtle and warm and even a little bit sweet. But you, it's just that beginning that's a bit tough to get through. And considering how I've described it, it probably wouldn't surprise you to say almost strictly for me, a late fall or winter fragrance. Uh, you definitely don't want to sport this in three degree, excuse me, three digit heat. Um, this is not something you want to wear in the summer unless you have very, very cool summers. Uh, if you're light on the trigger, I don't think it's going to offend anyone at work, especially if you have a commute to work where you can uh, let it settle down on the skin a little bit first, half an hour to an hour. It's, this is not for everyone. Uh, it's unquestionably bold and um, coniferous and and piney and, and assertive and uncompromising. But some some people may not find it unique enough to be a formal occasion fragrance. But that's fine. You know, um, my favorite times to wear it are when it's freezing outside, and I'll just you know, spray it a couple of times and just take a long walk outside when it's, you know, 25 or 30 degrees outside, which I've been doing, you know, ever since I laid my nose on it, like I said, about 15 years ago. Um, I, for a long time, I didn't smell it. And then I came across it last year in um, a perfume mania store, I think. And I just, I remembered it. And I remembered the shape of the bottle. The same shape of the bottle had not changed. So I just had to pick it up, if nothing else, for uh, for the sake of nostalgia. And maybe the best part of this, the whole fragrance, is that you can buy 100 mils. That's 3.3, 3.4 ounces on FragranceNet today for $15.99. 15 dollars not 50 15 dollars and 99 cents and if you like deep dark sparkly aldehydic sharp resinous woody coniferous piney smells then you could do a lot worse than to blind buy this um, or at least to you know go out and find yourself a sample i've never seen a sample online i just uh, seen bottles. I think it just comes in the 3.4 100 mil. Again, 16 bucks. Um, you really can't go wrong. It's um, like I said, a piece of nostalgia, if nothing else, right? To anyone who is anyone else who's interested in sharing their opinions about Critia, or if you own it, or if you have any opinions about it, please let me know below or post a review of your own and, and direct me toward it because I think fragrances like Critzia Uomo really deserve more play in the community <clears throat> even if it's um, a negative review. Um, it's so distinctive and it's so interesting um, that I think it deserves more time and more consideration from people uh, who are doing fragrance reviews. So I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye.